right, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com, and this is part two of my garden plan uh, video. Uh, part one, I, I basically showed how I like to lay things out and lessons I learned from last year and how last year's garden will inform uh, this year's garden. And I was initially going to do this as a two-part video, but I, I actually think I'm going to do it as a three-part video. I'm going to do a new thing this year, and I, I don't know if people will find it interesting or not. I'll... I'll the views will tell me everything. If people <laughs> if people watch it, they like it, and if they don't watch it, they don't. I guess they won't do it again. But what I was going to do today, what so my process is to make a list of all the things I want to plant, and then figure out if there's room for everything. So stage so so step one, of course, is looking at last year and making notes about what happened last year and coming up with ideas for the coming year. Okay. Uh, step two is deciding what I'm going to get, you know, all the different seeds, all the different things I'm going to order for the coming year. And so my process for that is, I mean, I get all my stuff from, they, they sponsor the show, Vessi Seeds. So I get all my stuff from them, you know, they just provide it to me. So of course I buy, <laughs> I get everything from them because I, I get it for free, but that's also useful for, for you because if there's something they sell that you're not sure about, you can just watch how it does in my garden and see what I think about it. That, I mean, that still might might not mean it's ideal for you, but anyway, it gives you some information. So all I really do is I have a I have a list in Excel. Okay, this is last year's list of things I ordered. So I, I go on the website and I just go from A all the way to T <laughs> and pick everything I want. And I make a list of that, okay? And then once I've made a list of that, I go to the garden and I start deciding where everything should go and if I've got room for everything. And I just I work my way from the top to the bottom of the list. And if it's if I've got a spot for it, I put a Y next to it. And if I've got a spot for it where there's no, I don't, I haven't figured out a spot for it. I either don't put a Y for it, but basically what happens is I start paring this list down. Okay, so that'll be the next video. So for me, for step one here is just create a, a new list, right? Um, so that's, that's what I'm doing here, right? So now um, the process will just be to go to the website and start choosing what I'm going to get. So, you know, I just go and start with, I already got, I'm not going to plant artichokes. I already have asparagus. Uh, most of the, the, I think all the functional asparagus I have in my garden now were planted by seed, and I highly recommend that as opposed to getting the, the um, crowns as transplants. Uh, even when you plant crowns, it might take two or three or even four years for them to actually start producing. And since the seeds take about, you know, three, four or five years to start producing, uh, they're just so much cheaper. You can get a pack of seeds for, you know, uh, next to nothing, you know compared to the crowns. Anyway, I already have asparagus, so I don't need those. So for beans, um, what I tend to do is I tend to choose at least one thing that I, I trust, that I, you know, because I have so much space in such a large garden, uh, I can plant more than one variety of things. If you have a small garden, like, you know, let's say, you know, up to, you know, three beds or something like that, you're only going to need one type of bean, <laughs> right? But I, one, one of my... Um, you know, in my garden plan, I always have like advice things that I learned from the previous year. So 2021 notes, note number one was plant more beans, <laughs> right? Plant more beans. Um, so that means I need to order at least three packs of beans. I had beans fail as well. And I saved some bean seeds this year too, but um, you'd be surprised uh, when things, things can go wrong with particular plants. I, you know, I can have a whole bed of beans growing and they're, let's say, two, three inches high. And then a, a rabbit finds its way through my fence and just wipes that whole thing out in one night. Right. That can happen. So now you're at a bean. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, what I'm going to go with for um, the coming year is uh, there's a type of bean I, I plant every year that I find very reliable. I always trust this one here, provider. They're relatively inexpensive as, as beans go. So I'm going to order the provider. Uh, I'm going to get, um, there's another one I grew a couple of years ago that I wanted to try again. These ones here are Serpador Romano beans. So provider is a bush bean. 
These Serpador Romano beans are bush beans. Uh, they're like a short, fat, uh, yellow bean. They're very good tasting. Uh, the, the plant produces for a good amount of time, but also um, these are slow to become woody. I would put it that way. So like when you plant beans, when the beans are ready, there's like a short window of time between when the beans are ready and when they're too, too ready, <laughs> right? Uh, like the, the beans too mature and it becomes woody and that sort of thing. Uh, these beans are fairly forgiving and they're very good eating and they're, they're beautiful on the plate because they have this nice yellow color, right? They're just big fat uh, Romano beans. So I'm gonna order those again. I planted those not last year, but the year before that, I think. So that's two bush beans, and I can have at least one uh, type of, uh, you know, uh, climbing bean. Uh, year after year after year, I tend to plant the um, rattles, rattlesnake pole beans. And I have some saved seeds uh, somewhere that I think I'm going to plant um, this year. Internet's not cooperating here. But this year, I saw that they're selling this bean here called Fortex Bean. Now, these are like a uh, long green bean. I've never planted them before, but I've heard about them. Uh, Vessi says they're delicious at any size. It's open pollinated, which means I can save the seeds uh, if I want. Open pollinated variety, excellent tasting beans. Even when seeds start to show, like when your beans start getting big and they, they start plumping up and the seeds start to show, the beans can actually start to degrade in flavor. So it's nice to have a bean that, uh, according to this, they still are good to eat even when they start to you know get a bit fat. Um, and they say it's a great choice for beginner and veteran gardeners alike. And fast growing, 65 days, right? And this uh, open pollen, it doesn't say it's a bush bean, but I'm going to assume it's a climbing bean just from the looks of it. Um, so they're not cheap, right? 860 is a lot for bean. Um, but of course for me, I just get them for nothing. But um, this is a good experiment for me to see how well these do if I like them. Great, and I can just keep the seeds. So even if you're balking at the price, let's say they're an exceptional bean, um, you can just, you know, save, you know, or put a, put aside a couple dozen beans and just uh, plant them the next year. Bean, beans are probably the easiest seed to save, or one of the easiest seeds to save. Very easy to put aside. I've been doing it for years. Um, so yeah, a bit of an a bit of an investment at the front end, but. You know, conceivably, you buy these, you never have to buy them again because you just keep saving the seed. So it's, it's, it's good value. So I'm going to try the Fortex this year. So that's my beans done. Uh, three different kinds of beans. Uh, and then uh, on to beets. Uh, I've decided, I was looking through these. I mean, they have so many different types. And what I tend to do when I'm going through these is I, I for every single beet, I look at like how fast it grows. That's a fast one, 50 to 55 to 60 days. Um, that's a good idea, right? And this is one of their top picks. Uh, what I want when I buy a beet is fast growing, disease resistant, and I want it really dark in color. Um, I, I tend to, I just, you know, if I make like something like borscht, I want it to be dark, 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 dark purple. And if I've got beets on my plate, I want them to have that sharp purple color. I want good flavor too. Usually when the beet's really dark in color, the flavor tends to go with it as well anyway. Um, so this year I'm gonna try these Merlins because they're fast growing, 55 days. And it says, one of the sweetest and darkest red beets we have found in our trials. Okay, and this is another thing. Vessis has like a, what do they call it? A, uh, what do they call that? Like an experimental garden. So they don't, as far as I know, they don't develop their own seeds, but everything they have in their catalog they have their own farm that they, they grow. When they get a seed from a provider, they, they try it out and see how it works. And they base these write-ups on that. And their staff eats the, you know, eats the produce that comes out of that. Uh, when I first started my relationship with Vessies, the idea was that I would go out there from time to time and uh, you know see the garden and do a tour and make videos about it. But then, then COVID, <laughs> right? So I'm not going anywhere. Um, anyway, I'm gonna get these Merlin beets. And I, I haven't planted those before, I don't think. Uh, I normally plant these ones here, first crop, which I highly recommend. So um, I, you know, I've been planting first crop for about three years and they're great. I'm taking a bit of a risk here getting away and I'm gonna go with, because these first crop are not as dark as these Merlins. These are, you know, um, they're good beet, they're good tasting, they're great, but they're not as dark. So I'm gonna try these Merlins 
and I'm going to go, I'm still going to still with one familiar beat, and that's this Taunus. I really like these Taunus. They're a long, narrow beat. They're sort of easy to peel. They sort of grow like a fat carrot sort of thing. Uh, they're, they're very forgiving to grow. Nice color, nice flavor, nice everything. Um, so, and I like growing two different varieties. I could, I could be happy growing all of these Taunus. Uh, anyway, I'm going to get those, the Taunus and the Merlins. Um, broccoli. I'm going to get the Artwork Broccolini. Uh, for some reason, the Vestis tends to run out of this, so I would order this right away. <laughs> it's a great broccoli because it's, I mean, all broccoli can be harvested multiple times. Uh, that is to say, you, know, you pick off the floret and then two smaller florets take their place. But these ones seem to be, they don't make a big floret. They make little ones and many of them. So, they tend to be good like that. I was also looking at this one here, Montebello Broccolini, because this is another sort of, you know, short, fast growing. Uh, I might order these in addition. Um, we tend to eat a lot of kale in the house, but my daughter has braces now. And uh, kale, it, it just makes more work for her to clean it out. Uh, broccoli isn't as bad in that category. And she loves, uh, my kids love broccoli. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to grow that. And it tends to, these uh, types of, you know, these broccolinis as opposed to broccoli tend to just grow better in my situation. I always have better success with them and better luck. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly um, amazed at how different growing conditions affect uh, your success with certain things. I, I used to live in a different part of the province. I was about a one hour's drive from where I am now. And uh, I could grow any kind of broccoli. I was in what they call the valley, which is the agricultural zone. For here it's just got better weather basically it's just really nice warm sunny summers as opposed to sort of damp foggy summers that we have here um and broccoli like cool weather uh but i could always i could grow any kind of broccoli i wanted when i lived in the valley just an hour's drive from here and here i find i don't have as good success with the uh, sort of the kind of broccoli you tend to see in the grocery store uh, it's these smaller kinds of Chinese broccolis and stuff like that. It, it, I tend to have better success growing those here, right? So, um, uh, so that's you know I'm, I'm thinking about the Montebello, but I'm definitely going to order the uh, artwork broccolini. Uh, and I can't remember what's if there's another one over here. Now these are just different. Uh, uh, Zamboni rapini. That might be. I might get that too. <laughs> I'm just going to write that down. It's important with some of these uh, faster growing, this is almost like a Chinese broccoli, they're great for stir fries, um, that when these are really, really young, they're extremely vulnerable to uh, flea beetles, slugs, snails, that sort of thing. And so you have to stay on top of them. Whatever method you use to deal with those pests, whether you put a you know mesh over your garden or you spray them with something or whatever, right? Um, these in particular uh, tend to be very vulnerable. <laughs> I mean, the whole that whole family, uh, the coal crops, right? They tend to be vulnerable to stuff like that. Uh, but all of these ones, like Zamboni, Rapini, and uh, what's the other page there? The uh, artwork. They're all fast growing and they're all tough. You can plant them almost as they're not as tough as like spinach. Like spinach and lettuce are just about the toughest plants in terms of early planting. I planted spinach and lettuce as early as uh, late February, you know, under plastic domes and stuff like that, right? Um, but even under a plastic dome, it can get very, 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 very cold at night. And I've had, I've tried experiments with broccolini, planting it in like March, and it gets growing and all that sort of stuff. But if you have a really cold snap, a cold night where it's like minus 10 or, you know, below that, as Celsius, uh, it, all the leaves just die. It can only take so much cold. I've, I've found spinach and lettuce are the only plants that are kind of invincible for cold. And a lot of your coal crops, they can take it. And sometimes the foliage dies, but the plant survives and it just it gets, you know, sort of set back. Um, but, you know, suffice it to say, you can plant this early, you just can't plant it as early as spinach and stuff like that. But these grow fast, 57 days, right? So I find I have better success growing the broccolinis where I am. Uh, if you've tried to grow like these sort of big ones and you're not having a lot of success try if, and you like broccoli, try the little ones. Uh, that's broccoli. I'm not going to bother with Brussels sprouts. Uh, a viewer asked me very recently, why don't you grow Brussels sprouts? Well, because my family doesn't really like them. <laughs> I like them. 
a lot. Um, but I sort of have to fight to get people to eat. It's just, it's sort of, you know, there's nothing I enjoy more than growing something, picking it, cooking it for my family, and, and, and they're, they really enjoy it. If it's a, it's, if it's a battle um, and I can't win them over, uh, I, I just, it takes the fun out of it. So it's, it's not worth it to me. Uh, I either like Brussels sprouts, <laughs> but uh, it's a bit of a hard sell. Uh, cabbage, I'm not going to bother with because I grew it last year and it was so beset with pests. I thought I'd just go, I, I, last year I grew cabbage instead of collard greens. I'm going to go back to collards because it just seems to do better where I am. I use cabbage and collards the exact same way anyway. So why not use the thing that seems to deal with the pests I have to deal with a lot better. Uh, carrots, I had a heck of a time getting carrots to grow last year. And part of that was my fault. It's just, I, I think I just messed around too much uh, when I was sowing them. Uh, but suffice it to say, I ran out of carrot seeds from, I had to replant my carrots like three times last year. Uh, so I'm not going to be sort of caught with not enough carrot seeds this year. So I'm going to order, even though I tend to have two four by eight or four by 10 beds of carrots, usually a pack of seeds works for each, but I'm going to get a third pack of seed this year. So for this year, uh, I'm going to try that they have a new one. Uh, Whenever it says new, I get excited. <laughs> so they have this one called Calendor Carrot. Great all-around carrot. Uh, favored by his staff for its taste. Smooth exterior. Strong top attachment, meaning when you pull on the top, the carrot comes with it, doesn't break off. Um, so I'm going to try the Calendors. That's a new one. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, where is it here? Uh, Neptune, because I've grown it before. So this is, if you know anything about carrots, there's a type of carrot called Imperator. Imperators are like long and like perfectly shaped and just like a sort of, when you think of a carrot in your head, the long tapered carrot, that's the Imperator variety. Uh, so Neptune is like just a, basically a super Imperator, it's a hybrid. So it's been crossed with something else that gives it, you know, disease resistance and, uh, like they say here, an indistinct core. Now, a lot of people will say, um, and I pick these really big carrots in some of my videos, and they say, oh, isn't that, those are small ones taste better? No. <laughs> like some varieties of carrots m might get witty when they're big, but not all carrots are like that. So most of the ones I grow, uh, the big ones taste just as good as the small ones. <laughs> so and I've got kids, they'd be fussy. It would, it would be a problem, right? So that's a bit of a, a myth. I mean, I'm sure there's some variety of carrots when they get big, they have this huge woody core, but you know, you can get varieties that just don't have that trait. And then Neptune's one of them. You plant these in like April or May and just let them grow until November. You're going to have some huge carrots, right? So I'm going to get Neptunes and uh, what else am I going to get? I'm going to get the uh, Volcano. I planted those before and I was really happy with them. Here they are, a volcano. I don't know if they're an Imperator too, but these ones get big and, uh, you know, their the roots are resistant to breakage. That's important. Like sometimes when you're pulling a carrot out of the ground, you, you grab the top crown and it breaks off halfway down. Uh, so the resistance tops are upright, strongly attached. Um, so they pull out easily, right? Roots are resistant to breakage during harvest. They store well. Uh, highly resistant to alternaria, whatever that is, whatever it is, I don't want it. <laughs> so <laughs> they have a long days to maturity, but I mean, I plant these things in like April and they grow. I don't harvest them till November. Um, so it doesn't matter that they have that long, right? And I have more than one variety. So I get other faster growing ones in the garden. And also, you know, where carrots are concerned, um, we tend to not be interested in them. Carrots taste better after you've had a number of frosts, you know, when you're deep into fall. So we, we really, I mean, once in a while, I'll pick them during the summer just to add a carrot flavor to a dish, like if I'm making a coleslaw or something like that. Um, but really, we don't eat carrots in any quantity until October, October, November, December, and in the winter months. Uh, during the summer, we're inundated with zucchini and tomatoes and things like that. So that's what we're eating. We're not really interested in carrots. So the fact that they have a long days to maturity it doesn't matter. We're not trying to grow carrots quickly, right? Um, we want them ready much later after a bunch of frosts. So those are the three carrots I'm getting. Um, for um, I'm actually, you know, I thought about giving up on eggplant. I might have even told myself 
did I say? Try a new kale, go back to collards, don't cook the carrots. That's just advice on how to um, germinate them, fix drainage from them, blah, 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 blah. No, so I didn't give myself any advice about that. Anyway, I remember thinking in my garden, ah, every year I try to go eggplant, and every year it's a disaster. Uh, it's just such a hard, have such a hard go of getting these things to grow. So I looked at every single one of these eggplants they have here, and I picked one. See, this one says matures in 70 to 80 days. This is a uh, shiku. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, my family, everybody, we all love eggplant. But this one here, Miro eggplant. I mean, it's white. doesn't look like what I'm used to seeing in the grocery store. But look at this. Matures in 50 to 55 days from transplant. Early producing, right? So it appears as though this is a fast growing eggplant. So I'm going to order this one because why not try, right? I'm going to try to transplant them. I've got one window on my house in the kitchen and basically in the dining room where I can do transplants. Uh, last year I did some tomatoes in it. This year I'm going to do some eggplants and see what happens, right? Miro eggplant. So yeah, I'm going to go with that. Uh, collards, there's only one kind of collard at uh, Vessi's, flash collards. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, in terms of, uh, people, someone asked me recently, what about celery? Why don't you grow celery? I have this plant called lovage in my garden. It's, I guess it might be technically classified as an herb, but it's a perennial celery and it, it grows like up to six feet tall. It comes back every year. And whenever you, I mean, celery isn't really a food, it's a flavor. <laughs> put it that way right no one ever you don't live off of celery it's not a calorie crop right it's like it's more like a an aromatic it's a flavor you add to food um, so uh, I find the lovage just easier to deal with right I don't have to do anything every year I have all the celery I want and I don't have to do anything it just comes back um, so that's why I don't grow celery in my garden uh, collards Vessi's only has one kind so I'm getting and I've grown them before and they work great flash collards they get really big, they grow really good, and they taste great. So I'm going with the flash collards. Um, in terms of uh, corn, I didn't grow corn last summer, and I regretted it. Um, traditionally, corn can be challenging where I live because of the kind of, you know, subpar growing conditions here. But it, it just seems to be so hot every summer um, with, uh, you know, uh, climate change and everything that... I think it makes more sense to gamble on it being a hot summer. <laughs> I think we're just going to keep every year that's hotter than the year before. So I might as well just go with that. Um, so the one I'm going to try this year is this one called Cafe Corn. I took a look through all of the different corns. And this one, early, sweet, and juicy, 68 days. I noticed a lot of the corn were 70 days or more. And this is one of the few ones that was in less than 70 days. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm all about, right? The, the fast growing. Uh, so that's the corn I'm going to go with. I'm not going to bother with cucamelons. Cukes, uh, I've tried growing, um, like salad cucumbers, but you get so many of them. You're just eating so much of it. Um, it's just not, uh, how should I put it? Uh, it's a challenge to use them up. So what I tend to go with for cucumbers is uh, pickling cucumbers. You can still use them in salads. They're totally fine in salads. Just, I mean, cu pickling cucumbers can get large. It's, it's not recommended to let them get big, but, you know, uh, the, the two varieties of pickling cucumbers I buy, they're perfectly fine in salads. So uh, where are they here? Calypso. I'm going to buy a pack of those. I've used those before. They work great. And I think the other one is on the next page. Uh, this one here, regal cucumber, that's a pickling cucumber as well. It'll always say, if you, if you read the description of, uh, of a cucumber, it'll say, you know, pickler, <laughs> right? They tend to be spiny and, and short and stumpy, but you can't always tell that from the picture. So uh, for Vessies anyway, the, the two pickling cucumbers they have that I'm aware of are the regal and it says calypso cucumber, right? That says... My goodness, it doesn't say it's a pickling cucumber, but it's got two jars next to it in the picture. But I, I guarantee you, <laughs> see how it says three inch fruit, right? That's a pickling cucumber. Uh, all right. So uh, 
There's another one here. I don't know if this one's a pickler or not. Is it martini cucumber? Uh, five to six inch straight white skin. Yeah, I suppose it could be. I guess you could pick them immature and use them as picklers. But anyway, I don't know what makes a pickling cucumber a pickling cucumber, but I know that you, you want... I guess this is a gherkin type. This looks like a pickler as well, right? Quarantine. But you, if you're going to be doing pickling, you want a pickling cucumber. I pickle like, you know, I don't know what it is, six to ten gallons of pickles a year. I really like uh, fermented pickles. So anyway, I go with the Calypso and the Regal. That's what I go with. And if I want them for salad, I can use them for salad. Uh, in terms of, uh, I'm not going to bother with fennel. Uh, garlic, I plant my garlic in the fall. I recommend you do that as well. I've never planted it in the spring and, uh, uh, everything I've ever read says you should plant it in the fall. If you didn't plant garlic in fall 2021, um, I wouldn't mess around trying to plant it. And personally, it's my advice. I wouldn't mess around trying to plant it in the spring. I would just say, okay, I don't, you know, I'm not planting garlic this year, but I will plant it in September, October, 2022. That would be my advice for garlic. Uh, I know a lot of garden centers sell it in the spring and you can grow it in the spring, but it just grows better. <laughs> if you want to have big, strong, impressive garlic, plant it in like late September, early October, give it really good soil, give it all the sun it can take, uh, put a mulch over it for the winter and you're going to have awesome garlic. Um, ground cherries, I've grown them before. It's one of those things. I like them. I, I kind of thought it was one of these things my kids would love because uh, they, they have a really uh, tropical sort of taste. Uh, no one's really crazy about them but me, so it, it just doesn't make sense to devote space to growing them. I really like them. I think they're wonderful, but uh, I don't plant them. I don't bother with gourds because they're really not for food. They're more for show, and I, I, I like to use my space for food. Um, horseradish, we just don't eat enough of it. Uh, kale. Kale. So every year I have my own saved seed of my sort of wild kale that I like. And the last couple of years I've got, I've bought winter boar kale, which is Vessi's top pick. This year I'm going to try this uh, prism kale instead of the winter boar. I like the winter boar, um, but I find it, it tastes so much better after a frost and it's not as good in the summer. My, my kale, the ones that I have saved seed, are a lot like this red Russian kale here, okay? So and even though it says microgreens, these things can get huge and they can get, you know, you don't have to grow them as a microgreen, <laughs> right? These will have huge, big leaves. Um, I like this, and it tastes really good in the, you know, after you've had a few frosts, but it also tastes good in the summer. It's a very mustardy taste, I find it to be, at least the stuff I have. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd get this uh, prism instead of the um, winter boar. It says compact growth and it says it can be grown in containers as well. I'm not going to be doing that. Um, but I, I see this as a very well behaved. And they also say that they're almost stemless and they have a very nutty flavor. And it's a hybrid. So, you know, uh, I'm going to give it a try. It sounds like something that grows really, really fast. I like that too. So I'm going to try the prism kale and see where it goes. Again, every year, if I, if I have two of something, I have one old, one new, right? <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going with for kale. Uh, kohlrabi, I don't think I'm going to bother growing it this year. I, I always, I used to grow it a lot. And when I lived in the valley, it grew really well. I've had a heck of a time getting it to grow here. I'm not really crazy about the root part of it. I like the leaves of the kohlrabi. But if I'm growing collard greens, I don't, I don't know. I, I I go back and forth on these things, but I don't think I'm going to bother with kohlrabi. When I grow it, I grow it for the greens. I like the greens. They're a lot like collard greens, but they, they cook faster. They cook in a matter of minutes, as opposed to like collard greens. It take like half an hour. Um, but where I live here, I find they're incredibly uh, vulnerable to like, it's something like every pest in the world shows up for these things. Everything loves, every pest I have loves kohlrabi. So it's a challenge to grow it. Not impossible, but just one more, you know, why, why do I want things challenging? So I don't think I'm going to bother with uh, kohlrabi. I grew leeks last year. I was really happy with it. I can't remember which. I think I grew rally leeks last year. I'm going to try giant muscle burr leeks um, just because it says they're giant. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. <laughs> I'm going to try those. 
those leaks this year. I was really happy. Last year was my first year with leaks, and I, I'm going to stick with them. Uh, for lettuce, I still haven't decided what I'm going to get. I mean, there's so many different kinds of lettuce, and then you, you grow the lettuce, and then it's not, uh, some of them aren't as sweet as you might think. I'm going to go with this Barilla. What's it? Barilla Organic Lettuce. That looks, it kind of looks like a, to me, looks like a Boston lettuce, right? I tend to find those um, have the best flavor. Let's put it that way. I find, um, like, uh, what are they called? Um, what is it called? Romano? I'm trying to find an example. Like this here, Clowny Organic Lettuce. Okay. So it's the, you know, the kind you'd use for like uh, Caesar salad, right? That kind of lettuce. Um, I find some of them are more bitter than others. Yeah, romaine. That's what I was trying to say, romaine. Uh, romaine lettuce, sometimes it's great, sometimes it isn't. And you, you plant an entire bed of it and then like nobody likes it. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? Right? So I'm not sure if I'm going to go with a romaine. I like the way they look in the garden. Uh, but, you know... The window of time for growing lettuce in your garden is so narrow, right? You, you plant it in spring, and then by July, it's kind of done. And you can replant for fall if, you, if you're organized. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it can be a challenge. So anyway, I think I'm just going to go with this. Uh, I might get some more. I don't know. But I like these sort of butter lettuce types varieties, and that's what I think this is. Okay. I tend to have the best success with lettuce that, that grows like this. And, and in terms of... Uh, Mrs. Maritime Gardening, she tends to like them the most. <laughs> so, <laughs> mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? Um, that's lettuce. I'm not going to bother with melons or microgreens. This year, I'm actually going to try okra. Um, I tried it years ago and had no success, but I didn't buy it from Vestas. I just bought it from some other online thing, like Amazon or something. Um, anyway, I'm going to give this a try. Uh, you know, we, we eat foods like this sometimes, so like... like uh, jambalaya, that sort of thing. So I thought it would be nice to try and see how it works. This one's supposed to 50 to 60 days. That's pretty fast. I can't see why this wouldn't work for me. Uh, so I'm going to try growing okra this year. We'll see how that goes. Um, I got to find a place for all these things, but nevertheless. Uh, for uh, onions, I'm going to go with, again, one familiar. Actually, I'm going to go with everything familiar this year. I'm going to grow uh, nor stars. These are grown directly from seeds. And I'm going to go with uh, Sturian, which is a onion set. I like to buy one, have one thing of seeds and one thing of sets. Because if you screw up the seeds and you lose them, you still get the sets. And the seeds actually, onion seeds aren't that hard to grow. It's just they, they take a while to get started and you start getting nervous partway through. You think they're not going to grow. Um, but they will. <laughs> so, so those are the two ones. I've grown these ones before in the past too. Talons. Um, but anyway, that's the two I'm going to use. Uh, Styrian and North Star. Because North Star, if you look at their... Um, where's the thing here? North Star. They're uh, a fast-growing onion. So if you've got a, a short-growing season, right? Where do they go? North Star. Yeah. I can't, for some reason, I thought they were red. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, there's a North Star. Uh, 90 days, it says. So if you look at most of the other onions, it's not 90 days. It's like 106 days, 110 days, 120 days, right? This is the fastest one. And where I have a short growing season with not the best conditions, um, you know, like frontier onion, 100 days, right? So I tend to defer to the thing with the shortest days to maturity, <laughs> which is the North Star. All right, so that's the onions. Uh, thinking about trying some of these this year, because uh, we, we eat a lot of stir fries. They just don't have the stuff I buy at the grocery store. They don't sell. Maybe this pak choy would be a good one. Um, I'm not sure what these are. I never buy, I don't, I'm not a fan of, a fan of blends. You never know what you're getting. Um, and it says, it includes a variety of Asian greens, mustards, and kale. And I can see this mustard green. You don't want that. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's someone that likes it, but these things here, they're so strong in flavor. Um, I just avoid mixes. You know, I like to know exactly what I'm planting. Uh, I think I'm going to try this uh, Bopak uh, Pak Choi. 
because uh, it looks like something I buy at the Asian grocery store here. And um, maybe it'll work where I am. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to give that one a try if I can find a place to put it. Uh, where are we? Parsnips. I'm going to go with uh, um, Albion because I grow them every year and they work so well. And I thought I'd try these javelins. I mean, they look almost the same, but um, again, this is, I, I tend to like growing these sort of like newer varieties. They're just more resistant to stuff. Um, parsnips can get this stuff called canker. It's just sort of brown spots that show up on them. Not the end of the world. You can still eat them if they have that. But, you know, I tend to be, uh, you know, if I get a variety like Harris model parsnip, for instance, okay, this is a traditional parsnip. It's been around forever and it's a good tasting parsnip and all that sort of stuff. But in my garden, if I plant these, I get that those spots like canker. Still tastes great. Still fine. Um, but because it's an older variety, right? When they're, they're constantly developing new varieties, they're, they're selecting for the, the traits that are favorable, such as are resistant to things like canker. So I'm going to try the Albon and I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try the Javelin Parsnip this year and see how that goes. It's supposed to be a nice, big, tasty, fat, sweet, long. <laughs> right? Where's the downside? <laughs> resistant to high yielding, resistant to canker, creamy, tasty, and sweet, blah, 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 blah. That sounds like uh, my kind of food. So I'm going to get those. Um, peas. Peas, I'm going to stick with uh, my regular, um, where are they here? Um, I hope they still have the ones I like to buy. Let's see, they're called uh, Super Sugar Snap Peas, okay? That's the one I get every year. I'm always happy with them. I don't want to mess around with it. Uh, I mean, I get excited by seeing other things <laughs> uh, maybe right but um, yeah I find these so reliable and they're so good and we like them so much um, yeah I'm just going to stick with the super sugar snap um, so those are the peas I'm getting uh, in terms of uh, peppers I'm not sure what I'm going to do about peppers it's um, you know I, I grew them this year I had some I had a degree of success but I just, it's just so difficult to get them to grow where I am here. Even when I plant, when I buy transplants that are like, you know, foot and a half high and stick them in the ground at the right time of the year, they still grow poorly here. I just do not have the right conditions for peppers. So I don't think I'm going to bother with peppers this year. I think I'm going to use this base for something else. And so every year I grow them, I regret having tried. <laughs> So I don't want to. I just take, taking a year off of peppers. And I'm going to regroup a little bit. It's just I never. I, and I'll devote a whole garden to peppers, and I'll get like you know. So I'll devote a four by eight garden of, to peppers, and I'll get like eight, eight peppers. It's just not worth it, you know. Not worth the space. Think of how much tomato or kale or carrots or you know like I could get so much more out of the garden. Um, pepper or potatoes, unfortunately. Um, there was, I think, one or two farms in PEI that had some sort of disease in their potatoes. And as a result, the uh, Agriculture Canada was just said, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, you know, read about this yourself to get the story precisely exact. But basically, there, there was a problem with some potatoes in PEIs. And so uh, the, uh, the government has just said, no potatoes are coming out of PEI. It's my understanding of it. At least seed potatoes, right? Because they're, they're developed, grown and developed there in that soil. Um, now, this thing's still sort of being negotiated and it still um, might change. I don't know. But uh, as far as I know, um, unless it changes, I can't order my potatoes from Vessi Seeds. So, you know, I'll uh, just get them somewhere else. Haven't decided where. I have some I have some of my own saved seeds. I'll use those as well. But I, I don't save enough potato seeds to, uh, I always save some because I'm always afraid something like this is going to happen. <laughs> so I always have some, um, but I certainly didn't save enough to, to, you know, for the amount of potatoes I like to grow. I mean, I grow so much potatoes that we don't buy them, <laughs> right? <laughs> we have that much, right? We don't buy potatoes. By the time we're done eating all the potatoes I've saved, we don't want them. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're just done with potatoes for the year. And we usually finish eating all the potatoes in, in April. And then we start getting new ones in July. Uh, the earliest ones, like the Norlands. So May and June, we don't have any potatoes. And we just enjoy eating uh, pasta and rice and you know other kinds of starch, <laughs> bread. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no choices here on potatoes, unfortunately. Uh, pumpkins, I'm going to grow some pumpkins this year. Um, I've... I got a buddy of mine, he's always trying to like grow a bigger pumpkin than me and we're always sort of competing. He always wins. <laughs> he just does a better job of growing big pumpkins than me. Uh, I I plant a couple pumpkins outside the garden and use them for, you know, Halloween and that sort of thing. Um, so it may be better for me to find a pumpkin I could actually eat that tastes good. Um, so many pumpkins, uh, really, they're not develop for their flavor, they're developed for their shape and their color and the way they look. Um, so it's it's hard to, you know, it's very difficult to you think of the space that's devoted to growing a pumpkin and you're doing it all just to cut the guts out, make a face on it and then throw it in the compost bin. Uh, seems like a waste of space. Um, but, you know, anyway, I'm going to grow a pumpkin and this will just be a pumpkin for you know, uh, Halloween type, <laughs> Halloween type thing. Uh, so I think they've got one here called, uh, like I tend to like to choose the ones that are like grow really fast. Uh, new rocket. That might be the, the one I will go with this year. Early maturity in about 86 days. Our best Jack o' Latin pumpkin for short seasons. Right. So that's, that's the one I'm going to go with this year. New rocket because, uh, yeah, it has the qualities I'm looking for, right? And we'll see how it goes. Uh, medium to large pumpkin, 14 to 22 pounds, right? And if I'm lucky, I get more than one, and I can I can share them with my friends, right? For, so they don't have to spend five or ten bucks on something to stick on their front step and throw away later on. <laughs> Half the reason you want to have chickens or something like that, you can feed the pumpkins to them, right? Um, so that's what I'm getting for a pumpkin. Remember, we still haven't chosen squash yet, right? Squash is where, where I, where I get start getting interested. Uh, I don't bother with radishes because nobody likes them. I don't bother the root parsley because I, I, have, I have parsley and I have parsnips. So parsnips a good root, and parsley, uh, I grow parsley just as parsley, right? Um, which reminds me, I should order some of those seeds as well. These are just the vegetables here, not the um, herbs. I'm not going to talk about the herbs in this here video. But I will get some parsley and cilantro. That's basically, uh, aside from this, the um, I have a, maybe a half a dozen or eight different types of perennial herbs that I have in the garden. And the annual herbs that I grow are parsley and coriander or cilantro. Uh, I'm not going to bother with turnips because nobody likes them except me. <laughs> Hearing a theme here, I don't really bother with uh, shoots. It's just not... Where my interest is um i got no problem with them it's just it's just not my not a culinary path i've i've explored yet and uh this year is not going to be any different from the last spinach now now you're talking uh i love my spinach and you know they don't have a lot of different varieties here but they're all perfectly fine i've grown i think all of these except regiment uh so this year i'm going to pick two i'm going to go with regiment and then go with Responder. Okay, they're, they're both, I mean, all spinach, they grow fast. They taste good, <laughs> right? I've grown this seaside before. That's a great one, too. And I've grown this lakeside before. That's a great one, too. One of the best for flavor, strong disease resistance, uniformity, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so um, I'm going to try this regiment because I've never grown it before. It looks, looks really nice to me. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be happy with it. I, for some reason, spinach grows really well in my garden. I always have success with spinach. Uh, unless I've got a, you know, real, uh, like chipmunk problem or a rabbit problem. Uh, so those are the spinaches I'm going to go with, uh, in terms of, um, I'm not going to bother with sprouts, squash, <coughs> uh, squash, this, uh, squash this year, I'm going to stick with pretty much what I grew last year. There's so many things to grow and it's so difficult to resist, um, choosing more 
boy, this one looks good. I, something about squash. I, I, you know, I could be happy just having a garden full of different squashes. The, you know, like if you have squash growing in your garden, you just look like such a successful gardener. The plants are big, they're bountiful, they're really low maintenance. I mean, the the, the foliage is so large it shades out weeds. Uh, they're so easy to store. They taste great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm oh man look at this this looks so good uh, <laughs> anyway I'm going to stick with my plan for now okay so I'm going to grow uh, where are they I grew these last year early buttercup winter squash butternut winter squash I was really happy with those I'm going to grow them again uh, last year they had one called sweet mama is that here um, I'm going to get to the summer squash in a second. I'm just going to cover my winter squash first. My wife really likes sweet mama, so I'm going to plant sweet mama again. Okay, so I'm going to go to butternut, sweet mama, and I've got my own saved seeds from my franken squash, the ones I call, if you follow my videos, called bear squash. i got some saved seeds I want to try and see how that works out. Uh, in terms of summer squash, I grew these magdas last summer. I was in love with these. They're, uh, I think, the Lebanese um, in origin. Uh, these are just fantastic squash. We use them in, for cooked. We use them for salad. They're just awesome squash. So I can't recommend them anything. So I'm definitely growing the Magda. As long as I can get it, I'm going to be growing it every year. It's such a wonderful, delicious, easy to grow, smooth skin squash. Just beautiful in color, uh, like a lime, bright sort of beautiful color green in with the salad or as a cooked green. There's just so many different ways you can prepare these, and I've done videos about it as well, different ways to cook them. So I'm going to go with the Magda and uh, another summer squash. I always like to have some sort of yellow squash, so I'll either grow this um, sun stripe here. I make a uh, zucchini relish, and my wife really likes like yellow zucchini relish because <laughs> yellow tastes better than green. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to be planting either, either sun stripe or uh, they have a couple different varieties here. Uh, Golden Delight, Goldie. I've, I've grown all of these. I'm happy with all of them. I don't really have a, 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 I don't really have a uh, favorite. Um, I've grown these in the past, Georgie Candy Roaster Winter, winter Squash. Uh, I don't have a space for them this year, but these are fantastic squash. I can't recommend a squash more. It's the one on the bottom of this long, there's three squash here, but the Georgia Candy Roaster is this long one here. They almost have a pink color, okay? They're great, good tasting, huge squash. They get really big. Uh, I might end up ordering them anyway. Uh, see what I mean? When it comes to squash, I just can't control myself. I have no self-control. Uh, I can't have enough squash in the garden. Um, I got plenty of strawberries. Uh, Swiss chard. Last year I ordered uh, strawberry uh, from, if you, if you go to uh, Fruits and Berries, right, you can order all these sorts of uh, bare root things that you just plant in the ground. They're, they've already started growing. They just, they pull them out of the ground. They store them in a particular way. They send them to you when it's time to plant them. You plant them and then they grow. So that's how I got my strawberries last year. Uh, I can't remember which one I got. I think I might've got Kent's. Um, anyway, I got, I got the uh, June bearing strawberries last year and I, uh, they grew really well, and I expect to have a really good crop of strawberries this uh, June, late June this year. Uh, anyway, where was I? Uh, Swiss chard. Uh, I usually get Ford hook or Lucillus. Uh, I've grown this uh, Selvarado before. Uh, I like that, but it's not as green as like the Lucillus. The Lucillus has a deeper color green. It doesn't get as big though. And it tends to lay on the ground more, so you have to wash it more. The giant Ford hook tends to st stand straight up, and it gets big, and uh, I like it. <laughs> so I'm going to be ordering the... F it also looks impressive, right? People come by your garden and are like, oh my God, what are you doing, right, that I'm doing wrong, right? Because it's just, it's just, it gets big. But it's also very upright, and the leaves aren't laying around on the ground. Uh, so, uh, and it has a mild flavor, so... And they're pretty pest resistant. I don't find these get, I don't really use any sort of anything for these. They just tend to manage themselves. So these are the ones I'm going to grow. 
and they're really think of some of the prices you've seen on these um, different vegetables the Ford hook uh, very inexpensive seed to grow it's an heirloom as far as I understand it they've been around forever so I'm happy with them they work great uh, so that's uh, Swiss chard I think we're just about done here tomatoes tomatoes is I have a, a hard time choosing a tomato as I do a squash there's so many types and there's so many varieties um, last year I grew these and I was really happy with them um, but uh, like I might grow them again this year they're, they're okay so if you like cherry tomatoes these are the ones I would recommend you to get they're a short compact plant they're for they're for patio planting but they're great in a garden they really really produce and they really grow well and you will get a lot of them and then you got to do something with all of them right um, this is another thing where I'm the only person in the house that's really crazy about tomatoes like I can just sit and eat them right um, whereas my kids you know like they like spaghetti sauce and things like that right I mean they eat a lot of tomatoes but they're all they're always cooked um, you know when I give them a salad with tomatoes in it they sort of eat them but they're not crazy about them my, my wife likes tomatoes in a salad but she doesn't have like tomato sandwiches like I do um, that sort of thing so I found like last year I had uh, six of these growing in my garden maybe even seven and uh, it was hard to keep up with using them up to tell you the truth we just had more than we needed if you love cherry tomatoes uh, grow these it's a really low maintenance easy to grow fast growing just a great little plant to grow like the picture here is not distorted that is how productive they are it's amazing how many how so many chair uh, tomatoes can come up from such little foliage but that's how they grow um, so if you want a low maintenance uh, cherry plant uh, that's their cherry tomato plant that's the one you want to buy anyway I don't think I'm gonna grow them this year I was really happy with them but uh, I think for tomatoes we're gonna just try to grow like big round ones so you know for me what I'm looking for is a uh, Roma uh, I like to um, make tomato sauce um, and I also like to make like you know tomatoes for like putting on hamburgers and, and tomato sandwiches and that sort of thing so I'm, I'm just gonna go with the mountain merit and the plum regal right that's it that's what I'm gonna do with the tomato uh, so nothing nothing too exotic all these other ones are great premio tomato all that sort of stuff these are a nice fast one as well but uh, yeah, those are the ones I'm gonna go with we'll see how it goes I might change my mind but that's that's kind of where I am with all that all right so that's that's the list I got to type these into I got to add them all onto this here and that sort of stuff and um, once I've added so this is last year's list of all these different things uh, I grew so the, the plan is to take all those things I just listed and put them on this list and then uh, what I have to do after doing that is go to the map and find a place for everything and as I'm doing that just you know so each one of these will have a these will all be blank and I'll start just going yes yes as I found a place to put it right that way I know that there's a place to put it <laughs> once I've done that everything that doesn't have a home I have to make a decision does this come off the list or do I have to remove something else off the list all right so that way when April May June rolls around there's no agonizing wasting time humming hawing I've got all winter long to play in terms of where I think everything should go okay so the next video that's what I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be figuring out where everything goes and making all those uh, tough tough uh, <laughs> decisions and there are hard decisions to make um, because I mean what I just did today was the fun part right just you know going to the basically shopping and saying I want this and I want this and I want this and I want this and I, I want I want I want I want I want right and now I have to do the grown-up exercise of saying well there's what you want and there's what you can actually use and you, you can't always get what you want <laughs> so that'll be the next video anyway I hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe uh, and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden have fun planning your garden <laughs> thanks for watching